In this video, I am going to talk about uh, how one can use statistical modeling techniques to solve problems in marketing. Now, if you are working with marketing departments, then you come across a number of problems, number of choices to deal with, number of uh, decisions that is to that are to be made. So, how do we solve such problems in marketing using statistical modeling? That's what we are going to see. So, what are the problems that you normally face in marketing? It's important to know the attrition rate. Uh, also important to know the potential churn customers. Uh, it's important to know how many markets that exist, and you know that should the company should go with so that it's uh, op uh, optimum. Um, how to allocate a marketing budget? How to uh, you know have a good advertising strategy? How to have uh, how to assess the impact of marketing campaigns, whether it's effective or not? How to know who are the loyal customers and what are the key drivers for loyalty. How to know how to have a, a really good direct marketing strategy, key drivers of sales, choosing between different marketing products and strategy. So these are some of the problems that you, uh, you know, come across in marketing and how do you solve them. So there are several uh, very uh, good industry practices that that's used um, in solving marketing problems and we'll talk about few of them okay uh, the first problem that we talked about in the previous slide was uh, knowing the churn knowing who are the customer going to leave uh, the uh, company they are, they are not no more going to be with the company uh, they have been you know buying product and services but now they will be going to someone else so it's known as churn modeling also known as attrition modeling so it's a predicting model and it's about predicting the chances of customers leaving. So it's a model that uses uh, probability models to find out the probability that a customer will be leaving. Okay. Uh, so it's basically a classification of potential churn customers from the rest of the group. Okay. So if you know beforehand that how many customers, okay, let's say you know that 5% of the customer and who are the 5% of the customer with, who are, you know, going to uh, leave the organization then you'll be better prepared right and you will have a better strategy for them just to retain them so retention is something that is the most important thing to know in churn prediction also important to have uh, you know the numbers very correctly beforehand so as to have uh, you know an effective strategy for this small section of customer who are likely to uh, churn so that different metrics used uh, even in daily operations where you know you have the model in place to know uh, the customer's potential uh, churns and then you use that you know day-to-day -day business operation to ensure that that can be minimized many num uh, a number of models are used for this mostly classification model such as decision tree logistic regression ensemble models like random forest uh, and uh, as well as you know more uh, sophisticated neural network model as well depending on uh, the type of data or the quantity of data uh, you have with you customer lifetime value model so it's uh, very well used in many industries um, and traditional model have been in use for for a many many decades now uh, so it's about knowing the lifetime value of a customer or a group of customers and it's basically in, in money terms of course value cannot be measured there are uh, you know non monetary value also but that cannot be quantified easily so monetary uh, value is is something that is quantified or quantifiable and that's what is the motivation behind behind the customer lifetime value also known as clv model so it's about knowing the length of engagement with the customers so how long the customer is going to be retained so that's uh, you you find out using survival models or attrition models then the probability of attrition so when is going to, uh, you know what is the uh, probability of the customer leaving so that's a classification model that we saw in the last slide the revenue model so how much money that you are going to make from a customer with you know that kind of engagement or a given engagement okay so you know the period of engagement you know what the products are and then you calculate the revenue so that can be done for an individual and also for a segment. So that's the motivation of CLB model. Market mix models. Again, a traditional model have been in use for, for many decades now. So it's a model used uh, for decision making purpose 
and it's not a predictive model rather it's a model used uh, for knowing um, inference or drawing inference or just to get insight from your data so most uh, data science or analytics models are used for two reasons right to get insight about a, about the data and to you know do automation or prediction rather right so this is more like uh, a problem that deals with insight right? uh, so it has to do with inference instead of prediction that's what i mean so uh, many decisions are taken uh, in marketing because you always optimize want to optimize the uh, marketing spend that you are making so that the revenue is uh, maximum that means for a given amount of marketing budget you should uh, uh, you know have a strategy that uh, optimize the revenue or sales or whatever whatever metrics that you are following so targeting right audience is important uh, targeting uh, of finding a right time to target customers uh, what is the right frequency of targeting or having marketing campaigns right channel what is the perfect way whether it's social media whether it's internet offline online so many uh, you know choices one has and then price determining the price uh, setting the price then so it's basically used to take decision on marketing spending activities okay for instance you might have to choose between whether you will go for tv ads or, or google advertisement online advertisements and how do you divide your budget between these two okay so that could be one problem that that can be uh, considered as a marketing mix model the uh, techniques that you would be using uh, could be a number of but some of the popular ones are linear regression panel data analysis mix models and so on sales forecasting model uh, it's a model used um, to uh, find out or to predict the potential sales in short term or in long term. So that could be long term forecast and short term forecast. And the modeling techniques that you will be using for short term and long term forecast would differ. And that's important why to uh, you know categorize them separately. Okay. So the models that you use be you'll be using could be time series, univariate time series models. Uh, multivariate sorry multiple linear regression model even multivariate time series model so such models you use to forecast sometimes panel data models are also used uh, you know to forecast uh, advanced machine learning models especially non-linear models are also now are heavily popular in you know uh, doing forecasting so more uh, sophisticated machine learning models are, are now being used so that's cross cell and off cell model uh, well these models have been in use for a long time and people who work in credit card industry people who work in uh, insurance industry they are very familiar with such models uh, and now it's being used in e-commerce and you know many other uh, activities and even with the rise of e-commerce these, these models have become more important uh, to understand i mean gone are those days when people used to contact customers through um, other means offline means but now there is could be a very direct communication with the customers through email through uh, you know their user ids um, and through social media and so on so this model is all about exploring cross sell op opportunity and cross sell or uh, off sell um, are nothing but the marketing jargons for selling uh, something to your customers which is already who is already a, your customers like your um, it's an existing customer uh, or maybe a new customer that's not an important but what is important that if somebody is buying one product uh, you recommend him to uh, buy uh, another product okay and for instance just to understand what upsell is somebody is buying a mobile phone you're also uh, asking him to uh, buy the uh, cover of the mobile phone so that's upsell and cross sell could be uh, you know selling a totally different product you somebody is buying a mobile phone you're also um, selling him a watch okay so that watch is a different product than mobile phone if that's cross sell and upsell could be whether two products are very related okay or, you know which may be complementary uh, in some sense or maybe related uh, at a broad level so and that's quite effective especially increasing your sales and thereby increasing your revenue so uh, many models are used many techniques classification algorithms uh, to know 
what could be the best upsell opportunity, what could be the best cross-sell opportunity, linear programming, how do you optimize it, ensure that, you know, that doesn't have a uh, negative impact on your overall sales, uh, market basket uh, models, just, it's, it's a very simple model, again, uh, just to count the number of times somebody, you know, buys a mobile phone with a watch and, and finding the, you know, frequency and uh, recency and so on, and then uh, having um, a model to ensure that you know you are recommending correct product uh, for cross sell and upsell. Loyalty model. So loyalty uh, in marketing is nothing but uh, finding out customers who have been with uh, with you or with the brand for a long time and what the reasons are why people are with the same brand. So you should know what are the key drivers of your loyalty. Okay. Uh, it's important to know from uh, overall company strategy point of view and then loyalty could be different for new customers and old customers that means the so loyalty that was there in 80s could be different from 90s uh, and could be different uh, what is even now so finding a different trend in loyalty is also important in um, and that's what uh, we try to know from loyalty models so the techniques that use uh, in loyalty modeling uh, could be uh, Econometrics models such as uh, linear regression, hypothesis testing, ANOVA, uh, structural equation modeling, and so on. Segmentation models uh, heavily used in marketing analytics. Anyone working in marketing, they know that you need to know how many marketing segments or how many uh, customer segments uh, one has to cater to. You cannot have just n number of a number of uh, large number of mark. Uh, segments that would uh, have a negative impact at the same time you cannot have just one segment so what is the optimal uh, number of segments uh, that you want should have for your marketing activities or whether your sales activities uh, is something that is uh, decided from the segmentation model okay so you need to know the number of segment the types of segment product category with respect to different segments uh, the techniques that you would be using could be linear regression, decision tree, uh, unsupervised learning algorithms such as clustering, uh, principal component analysis, factor analysis. So these are the techniques that uh, we use in segmentation modeling. Survey analytics. Now survey analytics is something that has become more popular uh, recently, uh, especially uh, especially in the e-commerce e um, business because uh, nowadays it's very easy to get customer feedback very easily you know gone at those days where you have to go to the customer each customer to get his feedback offline basis is now not the case and now you have uh, online modes um, or online companies offering uh, survey analytics okay so basically it's marketing research you know people uh, like uh, companies like Nielsen and all uh, they are doing right market uh, marketing research to survey right whether it's FMCG product uh, whether it's retail products whether it's e-commerce product and so on um, so when you do a survey you actually study the customers preference you know the feedback on your product and services which could be online offline of course online is becoming more popular and traditionally it has been uh, offline but the tools and techniques that you have been using for offline can well be used for an online marketing survey by modifying certain things which which are required to be modified um, so it uses a mixed bag of classification and regression models uh, to understand not just to understand to also have uh, to formulate strategy um, so you can use a statistical model to uh, get a lot of good insight from survey data Price elasticity of demand models, not very often used or uh, probably uh, not a model used in many industries. Uh, in fact, uh, I have worked with people who, uh, you know, this pose this uh, question about knowing, uh, you know, the, the demand uh, or, or the de how demand get affected with respect to price, but they do not quite know that with data you can actually solve that problem. Okay. And that's a problem that almost every industry faces, but not every industry uses a demand forecast, uh, sorry, a price elasticity of demand model. Um, so this is the model to know that if you change your 
price right oftentimes you have to change your price you have to correct your price could be um, and, and most sometimes you are increasing your price and that's not a good thing for your customers so how is it going to impact your demand okay so your idea is to know the change in demand the change in demand with respect to the change in price so that's what you are trying to uh, model um, in in this uh, in this modeling technique okay now once you know that right uh, you would be in a better position to decide what could be the optimal change because end of the day what matters to your revenue right so what price would ensure that your revenue is optimum that you would come to know by uh, having a price elasticity model and how is that uh, you know related to marketing analytics right some some might think people might think that this is more of a strategy not of marketing well price is an important factor in marketing when you go to customer the first thing customer will ask you is the price and you have to justify it and you know going from back taking a backward approach you all need to you need to know that whether increase in price is going to affect the demand or not whether it's an elastic or an inelastic product uh, is something that you know uh, marketing managers need to know before even you know going to customers and selling uh, or trying to talk about the customers so it helps you uh, in, in building your story a b testing uh, heavily used in product analytics uh, the famous case study could be the a b testing use uh, done by google uh, in the early days of google uh, many companies do it on a daily basis uh, or in a regular basis like most uh, large tech companies amazon google and so on so these are decision making models which are used to choose uh, one decision over the other or one product strategy over the others now a b testing is used in many fields not just in marketing also in uh, product analytics and so on but in marketing also you could decide that what what uh, there could be two sentences in your e uh, in, in email subject now you could ask yourself which subject would do better okay um uh, okay so that could be one one case so second thing is whether you should write a long email or a short email okay so that decision can be taken from a b testing and the popular technique that is used in a b testing is hypothesis testing which is a very simple one yet very powerful so that's what a b testing is all about and it's quite popular in uh, marketing analytics especially deciding um, you know which one to choose and it's not just two uh, two choices it could be uh, several others it could be you know a b c d as well so although it's known as a b testing you know you can have more than uh, you know two categories as well campaign analytics now people working in marketing analytics they are very familiar and people who work in marketing they know that campaigning is is um, it's a very common activity is done in marketing departments or by the marketing departments so the motivation behind campaigning and campaign analytics is to uh, to know how effective is your campaign and which campaign is effective what is the time that is uh, you know giving you the uh, op optimal effect um, which products are giving you the maximum effect which segments are having a good impact and so on so that's the idea uh, uh, behind uh, using campaign data and doing campaign and campaign analytics the tools and techniques that you would be using uh, could be many econometric models like linear regression logit probit models principal component analysis uh, many tree based model can be used optimization technique can be used uh, especially for uh, you know ensuring that uh, the decisions variables that you are, that that is going to come out of this campaign analytics are optimum so uh, you know optimization techniques can be used along with econometric models so these are some of the uh, you know marketing analytics models that people use in the industry and uh, it's not uh, the exhaustive list in fact there are more number of models so these are the 10 12 uh, models that we talked about here if you want to learn more about it uh, get a hands on experience on this um, through videos code and and with the uh, data so uh, you can get a study study pack uh, which we have you know created specifically 
people who are interested in marketing analytics and not just in marketing analytics this things can be used in sales analytics strategy analytics product analytics so people who are interested in sales or who are in sales advertisement um, uh, well uh, pre-sales uh, strategy okay uh, so they can also find this study fact very useful okay and you can contact us we have this email id you can contact us thank you so much